Hey, welcome all you diehard cigar smokers out there, or you newbies. Hey, it's a great, fun habit, as long as you don't get carried away. And uh, while the hat kind of, oh, I don't know if I like that gangster look, but the light tonight, I don't like the look on the shadows. We'll try this on a hat my daughter got me from Hawaii. Yeah, she's, she's a deary. I got two of them and four boys. Anyway, if you're not a cigar smoker and you thought about trying, it's a great habit. You're a puffer. Okay, no, tobacco isn't, like, great for you, but you're just puffing it and you're exhaling it. So if you want a habit that relieves a lot of stress, it's great. And so every video I try to show what I'm smoking, how to light it, maybe a few tips. Most cigars come with these plastic wrappers. And one thing to know about these, as you put these in your humidor, these wrappers do breathe. And so you can leave them in these wrappers, and lots of people do. And I often do. I never used to, but I, I've got busier, and I just don't have the time to unwrap every cigar that I get in and I order. And you're like, where do you order your cigars from? Uh, <laughs> I order my cigars mostly from Cigars International. They're online. They're a great wholesaler. There's a lot of other wholesalers online. It's funny. They all ship from the same fulfillment center. Yeah, right? Anyway, it's a great place to get cigars at uh, better prices, but these do breathe, and uh, there's two arguments. One is if you have really nice cigars, you want to leave them in there so they keep their flavor profile. The other argument is you want to unwrap all yours so they kind of like share the flow flavor profile in the box, and the, the good ones become better, and your, your really great ones, they're not going to get worse, and so I really don't think that latter argument has much merit to it, because I, I honestly don't think it makes a bit of difference. So you guys know, I should show you some of my other cutters. This is my favorite, because I love this back in it. This is just dummy proof, because there is, on the end of your cigar, there is a little tip. You probably can't see that. It's a cap of tobacco that's wrapped on the end, and you want to cut behind that on this end. Um, because the cigar may start to unravel if you get into the actual wrapper of the cigar. So it's pretty important. And this is kind of the dummy proof way. But if you got the regular cutter, it doesn't take that much. The biggest thing, some of my favorite cutter cutters that are the regular ones, they're just getting dull because they've cut so many cigars. And so I like this one. Tonight I'm gonna be smoking a My Father. This is, this is a really great brand. I've never had a, a bad cigar from them. Um, most of their cigars are on the medium to full size and uh, I don't have any doubts this is going to be a good one and so yeah the weather outside I'm not sure how long I'm going to be out here I've got this roaring fire going and hopefully it keeps me warm I'll probably get up and shut this damper down so I can even get some more heat out of it but you can probably see flurries like floating by the camera so we'll see how this goes so we're just going to cut it just like yep snip and sometimes if you want a little more, which I do on this one, I snip again, it gives you a little more draw, but you're still well behind that cap. Get the lighter out there. My dad left me in his stuff. Turn it up, we can hear some gas. We may be out. We may have to fill this bad boy up tonight. Or it could be too cold. Can I just say the first puffs of this are absolutely delightful. Got it nice and cherry red. We got a pretty nice start on it. <laughs> that darn COVID. Turn this one off, although it's nice and warm. And uh, what do we have for whiskey tonight? We have a special treat. I've been trying to get some more of my favorite whiskey, and I think I got a line on it. A friend of mine's gonna go to another town. I call the liquor store there, and they have some. The Nikka, I think it's, I always call it coffee, but I think it's called Kofe, Japanese whiskey. Wow, smooth. So I'm trying some other Japanese whiskey today that is a much less per bottle. It is uh, Achozaki, and uh, there is the label. And you notice the color's a lot lighter, so it's, uh, it's gonna be kind of intriguing. I don't know what it's gonna be like, but uh, at the liquor store, they tell me the people that buy it love it. But then they also told me it's not as good as the uh, Nika Kofade that I like. And so, uh, yeah, let's see here. This little label is uh, not uh, cooperating very well. There we go. We got it. 
uncork it here. Oh. Wow, it has a nice uh, aroma to it, that's for sure. Since it's cold out, we're going to pour ourselves, me. <laughs> and if you're out there, please feel free to join me wherever you're at. I love the company. I love knowing that you're out there. I love knowing that uh, you're either interested in bourbon, cigars, or some of the stuff I'm talking about. Oh, that's different. It's almost, the first sips are almost floral. That is... Pretty smooth, almost light. Yeah, what's it? <laughs> uh, finest Japanese whiskey. Need my reading glasses to read the rest of it. <laughs> I don't know what kind of barrels it maybe is aged in. That maybe could make a difference. I'm going to throw a couple more pieces of wood on the fire and uh, shut that damper down a bit. got that all taken care of although I didn't shut the damper down those of you that aren't haven't been around wood stoves and maybe don't know what they are this uh, porch fireplace it's like the ones Brady Bunch yes I'm dating myself would have on their front porch 70s looking thing cylinder the kind of tapers at the top and at the top where the stove pipe is there is this flapper that all the way closed prevents it from drawing air and all the way open allows it to draw a lot of air and so when you first start the fire you want it all the way open so the fire gets burning really nice and warm and then you can close that most of the way and it pushes the heat out towards me and so that's why I was anxious to close the damper because I wanted the heat out towards me. I'm just not sure what to think of this whiskey. I, I'm gonna say I'm liking it uh, it's just, it's really different. Yeah, pretty darn nice. I, I think what it's lacking, I'm used to stronger flavors because I'm um, mainly a bourbon guy. And I, bourbon's whiskey, but it's different mixes of mashes. So you tend to get like corn versus other mashes, rye and a wheat mash. And so... You tend to get more caramel, maybe vanilla notes out of a bourbon. Now, not always, because it, it depends how they're aged and different things like that. But uh, yeah, it usually has stronger flavors. And this is very light, but it, it definitely has nice flavors to it. Tomorrow's super exciting. Uh, my wife, she got her concealed carry permit not too long ago. And when she went, we originally had bought her a little ladies uh, Smith and Wesson 38 special and uh, she just didn't like it and uh, she went and shot with some of her girlfriends to get the concealed carry went through the class and then they had shooting time when one of the gals had a Glock 43X and she loved that and if any of you know during this time some guns are really hard to find that gun is really hard to find and so I ordered it from a major chain store which we don't have here in Belgrade or the Gallatin Valley that's the greater community around here and so we are hopefully going to go pick it up tomorrow, but it's like starting to spit snow and I do have new snow tires on my truck. So it's probably not that big a deal, but you guys, I don't have that great a track record driving with my wife. And so even on a good day, she's a little hesitant to drive with me. And so, yeah, on a, <laughs> on a snowy day, uh, not so much. I'm adjusting the camera a little bit. You can see this, uh, this mug a little better some lady on Facebook today <laughs> I'm not sure who it was it was somebody that I friended um, it's probably when I was on one of those rampages where I'm just like doo -doo 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 -doo. I, I do that occasionally sometimes I can be a little obsessive compulsive I I don't know I try to save it for the medial things like that but some ladies like hey handsome <laughs> yeah I didn't reply to that couldn't tell if she was joking you know your wife always says you're handsome but yeah 
I was a looker in the day, so. I'm so excited tonight after I'm done with this cigar, and maybe even before I'm done. Our family, and I don't know if you guys have dealt with this, but especially during the COVID-19, I'm looking around my house. Everybody's on a freaking screen. We're watching TV all the time. The TV's on all the dang time. Everybody's on their phones from the first time we get up in the morning, phone, tablet, whatever, and uh, on them just all day long. And I just like, we're all home together, but we're so separate. And so, and I, I take it personally, those of you, I, I'm the man of the house, okay? And for what that means is that the crap stops with me and the buck stops with me. And it's like, I am the responsible party. I'm, I'm very rarely the dictator. I'm often the guy that takes the blame for the way things are going in the house because a leader is the one that allows what's going on and doesn't allow what's going on. And so if you're the man of the household and there's things going on in your house, come on, dude, take care of it. You can do it. You're strong. And so that's what happened to me. I'm looking around. I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like because our family is really connected and there is a lot of strength. And in our family, there is a huge amount of value. It's like being in this family has tremendous value. You feel connected and you just feel a part of something really awesome. And I feel like with the, the stresses that are on us right now, and uh, we just have relied on our devices too much. We've relied on the TV too much. We're all waiting for the next season of whatever to come out. I don't know what you guys are watching, but we watch like The Mandalorian. Or Picard, which I don't even know is going to come out. I love Picard. And I love the the whole sci-fi thing. I know for a redneck, you're like, you like, love sci-fi. Wasn't necessarily a Star Wars fan, but The Mandalorian was awesome. Anyway, we're waiting for these shows to come out. I'm just like, wait, wait a minute. So tonight, and we set this for a couple nights a week for sure. So two, we're going to have prayer time. We're having prayer time at 930. And t today, it happens Mondays and Wednesdays. There's no TV, and we try really hard to limit our screen time other than to what's necessary for school and work. Can I tell you, we've been doing this for two weeks, and I've done this often. I've act, I've actually been a little extreme, and uh, I've just, like, up and canceled Netflix. The kids are like, Dad, why can't we log in to Netflix? It's because <laughs> we don't have it anymore. Because I just, and my kids know it, that I could sell the TV in a heartbeat. Because if you guys haven't realized it, and... Even doing these videos and the podcasts I do, I love people and I love community. And I think the connection between human beings and the interaction that happens between human beings, yes, it's awkward, yes, it's often strange, yes, it's often stressful, but yes, it is often delightful. It is highly valued. It is one of my primary core values. I love that interaction. And so when you take away those devices and things that draw our attention, you can interact with the family like we all had dinner this evening and some of us like I'm doing some video out here um, are doing some creative things on our own that we're not watching TV and just letting mindless dribble come into us but we're giving input and we're giving value back out and so I'm so excited because we're gonna have prayer time probably here I don't know it's probably approaching a half hour or so and I don't care where you are in your faith walk you can pray to the universe if you want now, I think there's a lot of benefit praying to a personal God because uh, I've, I've talked to the past. If you haven't been there, he's not this distant God. He desires a relationship with us. And you guys have all heard Jesus, Jesus this, and John 3.16. And, it, and it's kind of become road and it's, it's kind of become meaningless to a lot of us. But the gist of it is, in the garden, we had a great relationship. And he came and talked with us. And not through his fault, through our own. We got kicked out, okay? And ever since then, he has been trying to work out to reestablish the relationship. You guys, you could think of it like this, although it's not like this. I don't know if I even want to use that example because some of you are going to think, uh, but it's being separated. Like when someone breaks the law and they have to go to prison, there are consequences. And for God to have any standard that was other than non-subjective, that means not up for interpretation, that the rule is the rule and the consequence would be would be totally biased. And so to have rules that are the rules and they have consequences is the fairest thing possible. And so we, well, Adam and Eve, but if we were in their shoes, we would do that or probably worse, as I mentioned before, broke the rules. And so there are consequences. 
But he loved us so much. Yeah, I know. Some of you are like, I'm going to just hear me out for a second. I'm going to go a different direction with this pretty quick. But just hear me out for a second. Ever since that happened, he's been working a plan to get us back. And he wants us back. And so you can pray to the universe. You can pray to whatever you want. But that community and that time together where you're with your family, you're sharing needs, and you're praying your desires and your wants, that is so powerful. Now, you can add it to the next level, and you can bring the personal God into it. That's great, but you don't have to. I care about you having a great, fulfilling relationship with your family. I look around. <coughs> what a what a great. My father never disappoints. Wow. It is. If you guys are going to go after these, they're going to be spendy, and they usually don't come on sale. But great cigar. But back, a family, I realized... A lot of my friends don't have what I have. They may have money, boats, but when they're with their wife, things are just tense. I, I honestly wonder when the last time they had sex was and when the last time they had great sex was. It's really kind of sad. And then I realized with their kids, their kids just see them as a source of money or a source of whatever their needs. They don't have relationship. I came downstairs today and I was joking with my daughter. She had pigtails. I'm like, hey, pigtails. <laughs> And she's got my wit, plus probably better than my wit. And she's like, uh, hey, little hair. <laughs> she just cracked me up. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And then my other daughter just jumped right in after that. And I said something. Let me be mean about my hair. And my other daughter's like, hey, Dad, what hair? <laughs> that is, I live in that environment. It is awesome. And my wife, not always, but she is freaking funny. And she can be freaking funny. And she has the stresses and strains of running a household. And uh, sometimes that overwhelms her a bit. But she, she's pretty good about getting past it. She's just down. I live. I have, I have teenagers. I have four teenagers right now. And it's delightful. No, would I trade it for anything? No. And some of you out there are just like, this guy is just full of beep. Remember, save your explanation marks so they mean something. I'm really not. You can have this too. And, and a big part of that, and for me, is realizing I'm not going to get everything right. And it's doubtful that I'm probably going to get most things right. But I have been incredibly intentional about building these kind of relationships. I have been incredibly intentional what I imagine for the future of our family. Do you know that imagination is the birthplace for your next days? Yeah, but let me say it again because you're all like, uh, what? Or some of you are like, yeah. Your imagination is the birthplace for your next days. How your future is going to look is going to start in your imagination. If you have no imagination for the future, well, you're going to be doing what you're doing now or worse. Because entropy, natural degrading of things, they tend to go back to their most basic state. And so that basically means that your life is going to continue to fall apart. So if you have no vision for the future, and the Bible talks about that. Yes, those ancient scriptures, and I'm going to reference them because I'm a, I'm a man of faith. And uh, like it or not, I'm not going to twist your arm, but it's going to be part of what I share. And all you haters out there that are going to say cigar smokers are going to hell. Will you please post that? I'll like your comment. I will, because that's just freaking funny. And I might as well have some bourbon with that, too. Yeah, as always, I, I take a little break and I, I kind of forget where I'm at. I focus on my cigar and I'm like, oh, that's good. Hey, there's a TikTok message. You guys are like, dude, you're on TikTok? Man, it is like the Wild West, okay? I'm, I'm just going to warn you. And those of you that are a little conservative or you, some of you Christians that are watching me out there that are, yeah, you're going to post that I'm going to hell for smoking, you probably better stay off. But can I tell you, there are some people making a huge difference. Are there a lot of people being dorks? And there are some people being inappropriate? Absolutely. But the opportunities are great there. And that's why I'm on it, man. Because I want to make a difference. And I believe in making a difference. And I want other people to experience what I have about family. And so it is this family. Are things easy? I've told you before, and I'll tell you again. We go through the same things as you do with your kids. Do we tell them time and time and time again? to do something, take out the trash, take out the trash. 
you need to do the kitchen before you go to bed. And they don't do the kitchen. Dad, can I not? I'm like, it's been a decade, okay? It's been a freaking decade. And I've told you, no, and you went to bed, and so now I'm gonna give you the kitchen for another week. Natural consequences are great. I'm like, I care about you learning how to do this job the way that it's been specified and do it actually. So you obviously need more practice. Yeah, we deal with all that stuff. Even tonight, one of our older boys, it's like my wife is like, we're at the dinner table. He just has a pair of shoes that he needs to throw away. Yes, we deal with all the same things you do, okay? And don't disqualify yourself from having and being able and pursuing, because so often I hear this said, well, I especially hear this about homeschool all the time, and it's frankly, it's just BS and cowardice. And if you're my friends and you're watching this, I'm sorry. It's a choice. You choose not to do it. You can do it, okay? If you choose not to homeschool, just say you choose not to homeschool. But I hear people say all the time, well, me and my kids will kill each other. This won't work. And it's like, no, you choose not to try. And so some of you want what I have. You want a great family. and uh, But you're going to choose not to try because you've already disqualified. Tell me the reasons you can because this kid has ADHA or this kid, you know, is on Prozac or this kid. I, I've heard it all. And my kids are not perfect kids. They have their issues. There are probably kids that I have that should have been, no, I'm not gonna say should have been because I deal with things differently. You know, when uh, the doctor tells me something like your kid needs to be on Ritalin or it's, he's too hyper, he has a learning disorder. You know what I do? I start to research like a son of a gun and I start to pray like a son of a gun. And I have seen, whether it's through prayer or whether it's through my own research, those things be healed, fixed or dealt with, okay? I don't just succumb to things, I fight. And I fight for the ground I have, and I fight for this family, and what I have now is delightful, and I will continue to fight for it. Some days, I'm really stinking hard, right? Some days, I say the absolutely stupidest things to my wife. I don't know why. Why do I do that? You know, and then, it's, then I gotta be humble, you know? And uh, I, I need a lot of practice in being humble, and so I get it, because I say freaking stupid things, right? But I'm willing, I'm willing to fight the battle with my own ego to get the good stuff. And so if you're disqualifying yourself right now, quit freaking being a coward. Quit freaking making excuses. You can do anything you want to. And if you're the man of the household, man, get that pair down there. And I don't know, you maybe need to buy some supplements or something to grow a pair and raise your testosterone or... This is actually true. And some of you men may do it to increase your ball size and your testosterone testosterone production because you've drank too much freaking soy and you got man boobs and you don't you have a backbone in your freaking body go to the gym do deadlifts it will boost your testosterone naturally you don't have to go to the doctor you don't have to do anything you just start doing deadlifts and pretty soon you're going to realize that you got a little edge and you can do these hard things that you want it's it's freaking true okay it's freaking true yeah man do i hate excuses and you know why i hate excuses because man i have been the king of them and when change started to happen in my life, like change, not the change in your pocket, it's when I left this excuses behind and I started saying, how can I get past this? Who can help me get past this? What do I need to get past this? If you want something more for your life, first off, I talked about the imagination. And if you've listened to my stuff, I have other podcasts. Well, this isn't a podcast, but I have a podcast. You have podcasts. That'd be a great one. Some of you probably aren't going to be listening to it because some of it is just like, it's too woo-woo. And uh, it's when I was first starting and I probably really sucked bad, but that's okay. I learned a long time ago, you never erase anything you did because that is a historical record of how you improved. And so if you don't like how I was back then, I'm all right with it. If you want some valuable information from a guy that's living in the fulfillment of a wonderful family and a family that loves him and loves his family and that there is so much richness here, you should keep listening. If you don't want that, you don't like the packaging, I get it. I get it. I mean, this is a pretty face, but some of you, your tastes are just a little skewed. So intention, dropping the excuses. You're intentional. You're intentional about telling your kids who they're going to become, not what they're going to do who they're going to become. They're going to become brave. They're going to become courageous. They are going to become problem solvers. You're going to tell your wife that she is compassionate. She is loving. 
even if she's exploding on the kids. What mom doesn't? It's freaking it's a freaking hard job. You're speaking what you want to see, not what you see. And too many parents and too many spouses get stuck in this. They speak what they see. You, I speak what I want to see. I speak what's coming. Okay, I speak into the future. If you want to live where you're at, keep speaking what you see. If you want to see different things, speak into the future. Think, speak what you're imagining. I get excited. I've watched some of my other videos and I leave out words. I have to, my brain gets going too fast. It can't keep up. Well, my mouth can't keep up with my brain. So you speak what you want to see in the future. And you got to start in your imagination and you got to see something different. But it will happen, folks. I just can't tell you. I'm living in the midst of this. I'm living in a wonderful life, not a perfect life. You know, my oldest boy, he's been working for somebody else. And he doesn't live at home. And he's just like, hey, Dad, do you got any extra work? I would love to work with you. How many of you can say that about your fathers? And how many of you would your kids say that about you? Okay, I'm just going to tell you something that you may not like because you're making excuses why your kids don't want to work for you. I freaking invested. I freaking earned that. And so if you don't have it, you may need to backtrack and do some investing. I've talked about credibility. You need to build some credibility with your kids. So you guys, I'm enjoying this my father, and I'm enjoying this whiskey. And uh, before I run out of words, because it's happening quick, I gave you some real gems tonight. I gave you some things to think about. You know, uh, I don't have any sponsors. I don't have anything like that. But if you want to donate to my channel, Hey, I'm going to buy some more whiskeys and we'll talk about them. And you'll help me try some more whiskeys. And uh, if you support me, maybe I get to spend more time with my family and I have to work so much. Because I'm working 40 plus, plus doing three podcasts, plus doing video for three podcasts, plus doing video for the Cigar Night website. Yeah, was that a little bit of a whine? Ah, I'm pl pulling at your heartstrings a little bit. If you can uh, loosen up that pocketbook a little bit and send a little support my way greatly appreciated. I'm going to keep bringing you valuable content. I want you to live the great life, okay? And so that is my passion. So cheers, my friends. Appreciate you.